Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Autotempest.com. It's where smart shoppers look for used cars because they know that saving time is the same as saving money. And while I normally talk to you about all the cool things Autotempest does on their site, today I want to talk to you about all the cool things they're doing for us. They are sponsoring a new show I'm making with Rob Ferretti, Amelia Hartford, and Tanner Faust called Sorted, where we are searching for the country's most sorted tuner car. Now, we're filming it this week in Florida, and we're filming it next month in the West Coast. So if you're going to be on the West Coast with your tuner car, hit up sortedornot.com to possibly enter and win the grand prize. And if you're looking for a project car, autotempest.com is clearly the place to start because it looks at all the online listing sites at the same time. They've been supporting us for a very long time, and now they're supporting us with a brand new show. So check out sortedornot.com, look for the show coming out soon, and go to Auto Tempest for all your project car needs. What's up everyone? Welcome to Westside Collector Car Storage, and today I'm going to tell you why my Vespa GTS Super 300 is my favorite everyday vehicle that I've ever owned. I started riding motorcycles in 2008, riding a Vespa 50 that belonged to my girlfriend. Imagine me riding on a five horsepower Vespa 50 on the street. It was actually kind of sketchy. I then upgraded to the Yamaha Zuma 125 for like six years and eventually needed something that was a little more highway capable. The GTS 300 is the fastest, most powerful Vespa ever made. It has a liquid-cooled thumper single-cylinder engine, 278 cc, with a four-valve head, electronic injection, and electronic ignition. It makes 21 horsepower, 21, and 16 pound-feet of torque, uh, with a power band that ranges from about 2,500 all the way to 7,200 RPM and a CVT gearbox. Like most other scooters, the whole powertrain is mounted on the rear swing arm. Uh, the body is its own structural member, which is a really cool thing about Vespas. And the 300s are physically about 20% bigger than the 50s and the 125s are. So when you see someone like me sitting on it, it seems a little more proportional. That also means you get bigger seat, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, bigger shocks. We've got disc brakes front and rear, believe it or not, with ABS. And this thing even has traction control. It's pretty cool, actually. It's got a compartment under the seat, the extra compartment in the box, and you've even got a place to store your phone and some papers up here with a USB charger. The whole thing is awfully advanced for a Vespa. So, now that I've told you what the deal is, let's go for a ride. All right, we've jumped magically over to Venice, sort of near where I live. And I thought the best way to show you what I like so much about the GTS Super 300 was just to do my commute. So let's go. I love this bike so much because it literally makes my life so much easier. Like, motorcycles in general make my life easier because, you know, I can lane split here. I need to get places. Like, there's traffic a lot, and not having to wait as long at lights is like a very, very real time-saving thing for me. But motorcycles are fun, but I have no ego about them. Like, I don't really need to go, like, super fast. But I'm very happy to move through traffic at a pace that the other guy can't do. That's actually like how I define luxury. When I used to have a Chevy Volt and I could drive by myself in the carpool lane, that's how I would define luxury. I can go in a lane that you can't go in in your Bentley GT. All right, Sportsmobile, pick a lane, sir. So. We've got a 21 horsepower engine, a CVT gearbox, and sort of a feeling that you can just hammer the snot out of it all the time. You go full throttle. I mean, this thing is really, really fast by scooter standards, and you could certainly just pull out of, tra pull out of any traffic's way. Plus, it, even though it's a little bigger than the 125, it's still small enough where you're like scootering, you know? 
So we're going to go around the marina here. Um, between the, the practicality of the uh, under uh, seat storage and the, the, the cargo box in the back, I could seriously get like three, four days worth of groceries into this thing. I can carry work materials. Like whenever I um, borrow press motorcycles and they don't have like on bike storage, and I don't mean big saddlebags. I mean like really storage that doesn't make the bike much bigger. That's like kind of a point against. It's like a, I mean, it's like a sports car or anything, right? This is a very stylish commuting thing, um, but it happens to be very fun. The top speed of this is 75 miles an hour, according to uh, Vespa. I think it goes a, a little bit quicker than that, actually. Um, but it really is easy to just, as we'll see in a second, to, uh, to maintain and even make passes on the highway. One thing I kind of don't like about it is actually the side kickstand uh, sticks out a little bit, and so, oh, come on. And so when you go to lean it down to make a, a hard corner turning left, <laughs> you can scrape that, and I only use the center stand, so I might just maybe remove that. I don't even use it at all. But we're going around, uh, around the marina to get over to the 90 freeway. Oh, boy. I use uh, invisibility to my advantage. I pretty much assume that folks don't see me, and they, they tend to just sort of continue on the path that they were on if they're on their like cell phone or something. And so I just try to like get by them and get out of the way before they even know I'm there. That's like my strategy. It's kind of the opposite of the loud pipe save lives strategy. Um, it's just sort of the they're better off in ignorant bliss strategy. I don't know if it works or not. This crosswalk is the longest thing ever. The light for this crosswalk is terribly long. But lane splitting in California is such an advantage. It is so civilized. It's like legalized weed here, honestly. Once you go to a place that has legalized weed, you can't go back to illegal weed. You're like, but that was so civilized. And it's the same thing with lane splitting. Most people see who don't know about motorcycles see lane splitting as somehow being sketchy because the idea of using that space in between the lanes is ridiculous but if you're a motorcycle sized vehicle most of the time it's totally enough space and actually although it seems sketchy it's the difference between perception and reality because in reality um, what's much more dangerous to people on motorcycles is getting crunched uh, and rear-ended by... Jesus, are we going to hit every single red light on the way to the shop? This sucks. Um, getting crunched and in, in rear-ended in between a line of cars is actually much more dangerous statistically to a motorcyclist than being crunched in between two cars on the side. You know, cars don't just drive into each other sideways all the time, uh, you know, going the same direction, but they do rear end each other a lot. And so that science does make sense to me. Uh, and so to me, I will defend lane splitting and I think they should really expand it. There's no reason that they shouldn't expand lane splitting to other states, especially like a lot of the hostility towards motorcyclists. Um, happens in other states where they don't have aren't their people aren't used to it it's like i own the road but if a unit of car in traffic is one then a unit of motorcycle or scooter is pretty much zero in california because we just move through it without taking up any additional spaces um this bike is it it does feel a lot more substantial than the basic uh 125s part of that is really because the the bigger engine with its more advanced ignition controls and the ABS and the traction control and all that stuff but also it just feels structurally very sound I've got just under 2,000 miles on the bike I put about 12 8, 9, 1100 miles on it in about eight and a half months uh, during the pandemic, or the beginning of the pandemic, I should say, when traffic was very minimal, I really didn't use it at all because I could just drive cars without having to be impeded. But uh, now that traffic is starting to come back, 
uh, and my press car flow has slowed a little bit, I'm definitely taking a little more advantage of scooter life. And right now we're going to turn onto the, the freeway and I'll show you the acceleration and what really makes this thing different from the regular Vespas because it's a big deal. When I first rode the 300 back in the day, I was like, oh, this is the jam. One day when I can demonstrate that I could own a bike long term without breaking it or somehow fucking it up, then I'll get one of those. And when I owned that 125 for like ever, and I was like, okay, I can do this. I, I've worked hard. I deserve a little more. Here we go. So, full throttle. There's 30. 40. Again, indicated. Here's 50. And there's 60. And 70. 72. 73. 74. 75. And we have run out of room, held up by SUVs. But as you can see, it's really not bad. It really holds its own. And then here we are on, on the expansion joints of the 90 freeway. I hope the image stabilization on the cameras works because it's a little it's a little shaky for them, but it's really very smooth for me. And I'm just cruising here at 68, 69, and it's totally chill. If I wanted to ride longer distances, I'd get that big sort of dorky windshield and put it on this because you know, you do have to sit up into the wind, otherwise you get hunched down by it. But there we go, I'm just cruising it 70. And then I let off, and from that speed, if I let off, there's a pretty good amount of engine braking. So now I'm down to 50, not even, no brakes. 45, 40, you know, so I can really, I can coast down a lot. And then I don't really even have to touch the brakes until now when I'm like below like 30. But it really, you know, away from a light, away from a, a, a merge, you know, that's 55 right there. It, this thing scoots, man. And I like, you know, I like changing gears on a bike. I like running through and, you know, doing the clutch, the whole, like, the whole thing. Like, I like manual gearboxes too, but you gotta admit that for commuting in traffic, and most of it, frankly, is much worse than this. We've gotten some red lights on this little drive here, but this is still what I would consider to be very light traffic. Um, compared to what it could be. But this thing is so great for commuting. Your, your, your brakes are up here, your feet don't have to do anything. I don't need to wear the boots so I can run errands and kind of go about my day a little bit easier than if I'm on a full-size motorcycle. And I think it's fun. It makes me feel a little bit like I'm on vacation. Kind of like living in Venice does, you know, when you travel a lot, you come home to a beach town, you know, you don't feel the need to go on vacation so much because you're sort of there. This is the same kind of thing. A lot of people associate scooters with vacations, and so when I ride this thing, I don't have a Bluetooth headset, so I don't listen to music, but I also don't, you know, take phone calls or anything like that. I get to have, I get to have this commute time just to myself and my thoughts, oh, a little 9, 930 turbo cab over there myself and my thoughts and uh, and not have to be hung up by traffic and I just get to, to do my thing get here at WCCS park it right up front and then I can put all my stuff in the bike you know the helmet the gloves the glasses they go back here the jacket folds up and goes under the seat I park anywhere I want um, and my phone has been charging on the USB cable uh, down there. I've got, I've got my lightning charger going on. And the whole thing is really awesome. It's like, not only is it like an aesthetically pleasing thing, like this color Vespa is fabulous. Not only is it uh, fun to ride, uh, it's extremely practical. And it actually makes my life better.
and, and uh, you know, sports cars should do that, but also the stuff that you use every day should do that. And so I really like this thing a lot. There are competitors that are not Vespa branded, and some of them uh, are even more powerful and faster. Both Yamaha and Honda make fast scooters. They look more like their sport bike aesthetic. I love the Vespa aesthetic. It reminds me of vacation. It reminds me of Italy. It reminds me of Pininfarina and all those uh, styling houses style. There's just so much to love about it. So I don't have to thank anybody. This is my Vespa, and you should buy one too because it rules. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.